a broader perspective on the Venezuelan crisis now and a look at some of the outside influences at play. Eric Farnsworth is a noted expert who has worked in both the U.S. State Department, the U.S. Trade Representative's Office, and the Clinton White House. He is now Vice President of the Council of the Americas and the Americas Society. Just recently, President Nicolas Maduro agreed with the Red Cross to let in some aid. And for so long, he's denied that there's been any crisis at all. Help me understand Maduro's game here. Well, thanks, Allison, for having me on. His game is political and it's ideological. If he can uh, keep aid out of the country that's desperately needed, he can make the claim, as preposterous as it is, that there's no need for the aid, that there's no crisis in Venezuela, that the Chavista revolution can, in fact, deliver benefits to the people of Venezuela. Now, we know that that's on its face untrue, but that's the game that he's trying to play. At the same time, do you think he sees political advantage now, given how dire the situation is in the country, that if that aid arrives, he can wear that too? Yeah, I think that's exactly right. In fact, I've been surprised it's taken him so long to get to this place, uh, because I think it clearly does benefit him. If he can get the international community to provide assistance to his own people who desperately need it, uh, that's going to benefit the regime in some way. And it will also take pressure off uh, the international community from insisting on him allowing aid to come into the country, because now it is. So I think he, uh, at, at the worst, he comes out of this neutral, and uh, he may actually receive some benefit from it. Talk a little bit about the international influence, because much of the outside influence and the pressure on him coming from the United States, for example, from the Lima Group, uh, including Canada, um, has been on the political side. And when you look at the Red Cross, or you look at the plea for the United Nations to get involved, they're trying to take politics out of the equation. Is that, yeah, is, is that going to work? Well, I think uh, the situation is inherently political at this point, uh, and it's, you probably can't divorce it from the politics of the moment. Uh, the reality is the Venezuelan people are suffering. They do need help. Uh, more than 10 percent of the entire population of Venezuela is now outside of the country, many of them refugees in neighboring Colombia, Brazil, the small islands of the Caribbean, uh, and many have uh, migrated further afield to Chile, uh, to Europe, for example, uh, and we're seeing some, of course, into the United States and Canada. This is not because they want to leave Venezuela. It's because the situation there is so desperate. So you can't really say, uh, you know, that there's nothing, uh, there's nothing political behind this. But I think the first step is to try to get assistance uh, to the people who need it. But having said that, uh, in order to change the scenario fundamentally and to begin to restore uh, Venezuela to the place that it used to be, uh, you really do need to have uh, the Maduro regime move on. You need to have uh, the restoration of the democracy democratic path in Venezuela, and you have to have the ability uh, to return to a productive uh, country. Venezuela used to be Latin America's wealthiest country. Now it's a humanitarian crisis. That's how far it's fallen. There is some evidence, in spite of the popula popularity of Juan Guaido, that there is a building frustration within the opposition inside the country. You talked about Maduro's approach to Guaido as slicing salami. Uh, help me understand what you mean. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So the international community has made very clear that if uh, Maduro moves against interim president Juan Guaido, that they, the international community, will have a response. Now, that response is not defined, uh, but clearly there are additional steps that they're prepared to take in trying to keep uh, uh, Juan Guaido safe, uh, as well as people around him and his associates. What the Maduro government or the Maduro regime has done is to uh, take note of that, and so they're trying to take steps that they can, separate and apart from actually perhaps throwing Guaido in jail or certainly martyring him or anything like that, but to try to get closer, to try to continue to keep him on the defensive, to try to um, uh, make him uncomfortable uh, and had to have to react to the actions of the Maduro regime, rather than spending his time uh, building the movement uh, to try to restore democracy to Venezuela. So in the Middle East, uh, these would be called salami tactics, where you take one slice at a time and you keep trying to go forward to your ultimate goal. And I think Maduro is doing that, to try to see how far he can go to try to uh, persecute uh, Guaido before the international community takes any action. Take a step back now and talk to me a bit about the role that outside players have had. For example, Cuba, 
China, Russia, and to what extent they have, what extent they played supporting him? Yeah, this is one of the uh, most interesting parts, uh, if you want to use that word, of the entire crisis. So many people are focused on so-called U.S. intervention, which hasn't even occurred and most likely won't in Venezuela. And at the same time, Cuba, China, and Russia have already intervened in Venezuela. In particular, the Cubans have uh, fully uh, integrated themselves into Venezuela's security services, into their military, into the basic functions of the state, like passport services, the health care system, so that you, so that the Cubans really know uh, who's doing what in Venezuela and can keep tabs on people and can, frankly, uh, try to uh, keep, uh, in particular, the military and intelligence services uh, from working to, to overthrow uh, Maduro. The, the Chinese have given a lot of money. Um, they're probably less interested in the political developments in Venezuela and more interested in the oil uh, in Venezuela. They've given a lot of money up front, and they're being repaid by uh, oil, but that has that money has helped sustain uh, the Maduro regime in Venezuela, so it's proven uh, unhelpful. And then the Russians have become very active in, in Venezuela recently, even uh, sending a small number of troops uh, to, uh, to Venezuela, uh, certainly working with the Venezuelan intelligence services, working with the energy sector. Uh, and as we know from history, uh, Russian engagement in the Western Hemisphere is something that uh, even the countries of Latin America tend to look at with skepticism. And, and in the current situation, it's clearly unhelpful. So you have three countries who are very actively providing support to the Maduro regime in Venezuela, and that's complicating uh, the ability of the Venezuelan people themselves to try to transition toward a more democratic path. So from that perspective, I think uh, the activities of those uh, particular governments has proven to be very unhelpful. Given that global perspective, what does that suggest about what the U.S., Canada, and other countries with a different point of view about how they should approach this? I think that's a really good question, and it's fundamental. I, I've been very uh, heartened that uh, the Lima Group, of which, as you mentioned, Canada is a very important member, uh, has taken a leadership role uh, in trying to, first of all, alert the international community to the tragedy of Venezuela under Chavismo, uh, has also taken the lead in terms of uh, the initial recognition of Juan Guaido. They took that by refusing to recognize uh, Maduro uh, after his uh, self-reelection. Uh, last year, uh, and uh, and working very closely with the United States uh, and others. So I think there has been a very uh, a very uh, intentional um, effort to try to make sure that this is a regional uh, perspective and a regional effort. But at the same time, uh, the United States is the country that maintains the most leverage on Venezuela, and that's because our energy sectors for years have been fully integrated. Uh, and uh, it used to be that that was seen as a very positive thing, a very good thing. Uh, but that does give uh, the United States leverage over Venezuela, and the United States has recently moved to try to uh, employ that leverage uh, by uh, refusing to allow uh, financing to go to the Maduro regime, the thinking being that if the regime is starved for uh, resources, then it can't pay its supporters, particularly in the military and security services, and at some point they then say their life would be a lot better without Mr. Maduro uh, and would be willing to get rid of him. And I think that's the calculus that's been, uh, that Washington and other capitals have been pursuing. The question is, uh, is Mr. Maduro willing to play that game? Uh, and in the meantime, as we've already discussed, the support of Cuba, Russia, and China, in particular, is undermining that approach. So it is a very complicated effort, uh, a very complicated issue uh, that requires a lot of sophisticated effort. Um, at some point, will there be some sort of military response? I don't think that's in the cards, certainly not uh, for the, uh, in the current circumstances. Mr. Farnsworth, I thank you very much for your expertise on this. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I've really appreciated it.